Our guest speaker today is Mr. Yuri Batachi. Um, I would like to invite him to stand up and come forward. Uh, Mr. Yuri Batachi is a author based here in Hong Kong. Um, his columns are read daily and weekly around Asia. Uh, perhaps he is best known for one of his uh, comedy crime novels, um, The Feishe Detective? Feng Shui Detective. Okay, <laughs> working on my Chinese. Uh, he has helped found three uh, foundations uh, in Asia and around Hong Kong. Uh, they include the Asia Literary Review, the Hong Kong International Literary Festival, and the Man Asian Literary Prize. So he's very busy. In 2008, uh, he was uh, the chairman of judges for the inaugural Asian Australian Literary, Literary Award. So Mr. Miriam Vitali, we would like to introduce you and welcome to HKAA. Now, before I say a few words about graduation, I just want to I want to learn about you kids. They told me you are really clever. Is it true? <laughs> Hands up if you are kind of clever. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hands up if you're not very clever. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, exactly the same. Well, I'm going to give you an intelligence test. Question number one. Hands up if you are a girl. Hands up if you are a boy. Hands up if you're not sure if you're a girl or a boy. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five people are not sure if they're a girl or a boy. Hands up if you are five years old or more. Five years old or more. Hands up if you are six years old or more. Seven. Eight or more, nine or more, ten or more, eleven or more. Is anybody twelve or more? Thirteen or more? Fourteen or more? Hands up if you are older than your mama. Okay, more people are older than. Choose which you like best, okay? So, for example, uh, Batman or Spider Man? Okay, okay. Hands up if you like Batman best. Hands up if you like Spider Man best. Okay, Spider Man wins. Uh, rice or noodles for lunch? Hands up for rice. Hands up for noodles. Okay, noodles wins. Uh, okay, I'll give you a hard one. Uh, your teacher or pizza? Pizza! <laughs> uh, okay, hands up if you like pizza best. <laughs> hands up if you like your teacher best. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Pizza wins! Oh, shocking! That's shocking! Um, good, well, I've got to know you. Let me share a few words of uh, inspiration, if you can call it. When I was a kid, we had a really scary teacher. Uh, some of your teachers really scary. 
now this school has really nice teachers, but we had a scary teacher. And her job was to make sure we each chose what job we were going to do for the rest of our lives. It's really hard, isn't it? It's really hard to choose that. And especially for graduates who have to make important decisions. Well, every Friday, the teacher would come to class and point to each one of us and say, what are you going to do when you grow up? And you had to choose. What would you say? What would you say? She went round each person, and when she got to my turn, I was really smart. She said, you, what I want to be when you grow up. <laughs> now, I was a kind of dreamy kid, and I used to love trees. So I said, I would like to be a tree. <laughs> she said, you cannot be a tree. Next week on Friday, choose something human. Okay, next week Friday came, and the scary teacher came, and she said, You, what would you like to be when you grow up? Now, that week, I had been in the school library, and I was reading a book about King Arthur. Has anybody heard about King Arthur? Yeah? He's a really cool king. He had this big sword and he would chop people's heads off. So I thought, that would be a cool job. <laughs> so when she pointed to me, she said, what would you like to be when you grow up? And I said, King Arthur. <laughs> she thought I said, an author. <laughs> so she told my other teachers, he wants to be an author. And the other teachers told my parents, and my parents told my secondary school teachers, and my secondary school teachers told my university teachers, <laughs> and now I am an author. <laughs> so, the moral of this story is speak clearly, <laughs> or it might affect your whole life. Now, I didn't mind being an author because I had an uncle who was also an author. And he was a very cool guy. Now, uh, he wasn't my real uncle. Um, do you have people, grown-ups, and your mum and dad, maybe call them uncle and auntie, but they're not really your uncle and auntie? <laughs> well, this guy, we had to call him Uncle Arthur. Actually, I'm from South Asia. We do it backwards in South Asia. We call them Arthur Uncle. And you have to warm your head if you're from South Asia. Arthur Uncle. And Arthur Uncle was a bit crazy. And I went into his room and he had a little rock on his desk. And he said, This is a piece of the moon. My friend went to the moon. That sounds impossible, doesn't it? But he said something else too that really stuck in my mind. He said, if you took a radio and throw it up in the air to a certain level, it will stay there forever. And you could use it to talk to people. And he had lots of crazy ideas, did my uncle Arthur. And he inspired me to be an author because he used to write science fiction stories. And so that's what I became. I became a writer and I wrote a lot about uh, science and other subjects. But many years later, guess what happened? When I was a grown-up, I looked up Uncle Arthur on Wikipedia, and you can do the same thing. And you know that rock on his desk? It really was from the moon. Because one of his friends was a guy called Neil Armstrong. Do you know what Neil Armstrong did? Where did, where did he go? 
He went to the moon and he came back and he sent it to my uncle Arthur. And the other thing, the radio in the sky. If you look up Wikipedia, you'll find that a man called Arthur, many years ago, suggested shooting radios into the sky, and we can call them satellites. And have you ever made a phone call to someone in a different country? If you have done that, then you have used Uncle Arthur's invention, which is the radio satellite, which sends signals around the world. Now, why did I tell you this story? Because, you know, when you are young, you have lots of crazy and creative ideas, and that's what we need. We need, we need creative ideas, we need students who love to think, who love to read, who love to care about the world, because then you can change the world in the way that uh, Uncle Arthur did. Now, Hong Kong especially needs creative people because my generation of Hong Kong people not very creative. <laughs> like, if you look on the map, what is the central part of Hong Kong, the central business district called? Central. <laughs> if you look on Google Maps, what is the building in the middle of central called? Central building. <laughs> Opposite central building is a tower. What is it called? Central Tower. <laughs> Near where I live in Hong Kong, the building next to me is called Sky Scraper. <laughs> so you can see my generation of Hong Kong people are not too creative. We can't think of names for things. We just give them labels. Sometimes we feel creative like young people. And we say, let us use an adjective. So Hong Kong has a building called Greenish Building. <laughs> and it is white. Hong Kong has a building called Newish Building. And guess what? It's old. <laughs> Hong Kong has a has a I used to go to a restaurant every day in Tin Hao and it was called Quite Good Chinese Restaurant. <laughs> And if you open the menu, the main item on the menu, quite good noodles. <laughs> it was very accurate because the noodles were not great. Quite good is the plainest you can say. My favorite restaurant in Hong Kong used to be on Stanley Street and it was a vegetarian restaurant. Can you guess what it was called? <laughs> Correct, it was called vegetarian restaurant. <laughs> now when you went into vegetarian restaurant, then all the waitresses had a name tag just here. And every name tag said, waitress. <laughs> so the name tag served to differentiate the girls from the plants and the furniture and the fish. Okay, so that's my generation of Hong Kong people, which is why I'm so delighted when I visit schools and see young, creative kids like you who love music and art and singing and just doing great creative things uh, with great teachers. <laughs> now let me finish by uh, a word just for our graduates here in their wonderful Harry Potter-like costumes. You look great. Um, going through stages of life, we all have to do it. You leave, you go from one year group to another, you go from primary to secondary, you go from secondary school to, to sixth form college or whatever, you go to university. All these stages seem to be sad, uh, scary things to, to do. But, you know, when things happen at the right time, they're not sad and they're not scary, even though they seem to be. So, leaving one stage of life and then to the next stage, if it happens at the right time, then it might seem scary sad, difficult, but in fact, it's the right thing at the right time and it will, it will feel good. Um, let me just finish uh, 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 with this word. Um, children, you have a wonderful imagination. You're creative uh, and you need to uh, bring that creativity to the world. Let me give you one example. 100 years ago, there was a author just like me, 
and he was writing a book. And the book was about a bear. And he was thinking, I need a name for the bear. I know. And the name he thought up was Mr. Teddy Bear. <laughs> because that is how grown-ups think. We are really boring. But in his house at that time, there was a child whose name was Christopher. And Christopher came in and said, What are you doing? And the author said, I am writing a book about Mr. Teddy Bear. <laughs> so clever, right? And the boy said, That's boring. <laughs> I want you to call him Winnie. Now, what did the grown up say? Winnie is a girl's name. The bear is a boy. And the kid said, I want you to call him Winnie. Okay, said the author. And he said, um, Winnie, uh, Winnie what? And the child said, I want you to call him Pooh. <laughs> now, what do you think the grown up thought about that? You can't say that. That's a bad word. No one is allowed to say that. And the kid said, it's all right because it's the poo. <laughs> and so Mr. Teddy Bear became Winnie the Poo. <laughs> and he became the most famous children's book character in the whole world. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think any grown up could have thought of a creative name like Winnie the Poo? <laughs> No grown up in the world could have thought of that name because you need a certain type of creative imagination, something that you have and we do not have. Okay? So, grow up, go to the next stage of your life, study hard, read hard, but keep hold of your imagination, keep hold of your uh, childlike creativity. Don't lose that. That's where the magic lies. Finally, I was told, Dr. Pam, that this was a small school. I walked through the gate. Wow. It's bigger than, it's bigger than Chinasar Choi, my opposite. It's bigger than Kowloon, this school. It's a fantastic school, so, so uh, you're very lucky to be in a great school. And also, I visit many schools, and I'm always happy to come to a church school. I don't know, I just find, there are, some schools which are not church schools are also good, but church schools are seem special. They have a lovely family atmosphere. So, so do thank God for being in a wonderful school, with wonderful teachers, and fulfill your potential. Thank you. Bye-bye.